First of all, if you're wondering whether or not you should buy this game, you know, trying to justify spending the money or not, just go buy it. I really don't think that you're going to regret it. That doesn't mean it's a masterpiece or anything, but for the emotional ride that it takes you on, it's a fair price to support the somewhat small team of developers that made it. Plus, right now, it's 50% off. It's $8.99, which is about the price that I pay for most fast food combo meals, and I only enjoy those for about 5 to 10 minutes at the most. So, it's a steal. But let's actually talk about the game now. Like most games nowadays, it's really hard to categorize Firewatch into just one genre category, but this is my best attempt to sum it up. Firewatch is a first-person interactive semi-open world game with a linear plot, and it has elements of telltale and mystery sprinkled in. Okay, I know that's a mouthful, but I believe it to be pretty accurate to this game. You might be wondering, how can a game be semi-open world while having a linear plot? And that's a great question, honestly, but even more confusingly, I know that I said this game is worth the money, and it really is, but I have to warn you about its length. See, I know most people enjoy really long games, but this is a game that you can play through in a day, easily, maybe twice even if you have a lot of free time. It's, it's only four hours long, but it's not like The Order, which was deceivingly short and charged a premium price, no. It's much more worth it than that. So then, the question becomes, what makes it worth it? And honestly, I had that question too, but now that I've had a chance to play through the whole thing myself, I have an answer to that question, so let's dive into this thing. The game absolutely hinges on your interest in the relationship between you, Henry, the main character, and the only other person that you're going to be interacting with in conversations, Delilah. See, normally it's a risk for games to close out all their options of having other characters to converse with, other than just one, but with this game, it's impossible not to become invested in your character's relationship with Delilah. I mean, that's the main portion of the game. There's no combat, no challenging gameplay, no puzzles really, no upgrading stats, nothing like that. It's all character development and story, but the interesting thing is, you're not locked into singular choices when it comes to your relationship with Delilah and your character development. At least, it doesn't feel that way throughout the playthrough. You start off in a very fast sequence of dialogue screens that quickly explain how you got to this Firewatch job. So you navigate through different dialogue choices, but ultimately, they all lead you to meeting your wife, who sadly gets dementia. And you learn this job you take is ultimately an escape from your everyday life you're currently stuck in. Like I said, the main chunk of this game is communicating with Delilah over a radio, but you actually get to pick the dialogue that you respond with in the conversations you have with her. It's more than just multiple choice answers on a test though, no, you, you literally get to navigate the chemistry that you have with Delilah completely. Okay, I'm looking at it again. I love how they look at night. During the day it's just smoke, but when the sun is down you can just get lost. Yeah. I'm glad you're here. Why do you say that? Because I do. I'm not crazy. I mean, we've had such a good time, right? I wish I was over there. I wish you were too. I've never played a game that had me so interested in my relationship with other characters like this game has, let alone just one other character. As events play out, you do start to discover there's a bit of a mystery in this game that you are heavily involved with, and the plot really starts to take off at that point. Although that's traditionally the part of the game that takes over as the more interesting objective, I found that the character development and relationship you have with Delilah serve as something that complements the mystery plotline that you are all of a sudden thrown in the midst of. This is also one of the only games that drew me to keep going. See, I never wanted to put the controller down. I know it's short, but that's not the reason that I wanted to plow through it all in one sitting, no. See, there are resting points where you could save and exit the game, but it draws you in so much and piques your interest to push through to the next discovery in the plot that you never want to stop. You didn't fully know what was happening, but this other person that you were getting to know and you could optionally flirt with over a radio every single day made it that much more interesting. It's like watching a movie with a friend that has a bunch of crazy plot twists along the way. You almost want to pause at certain points and talk about it with your friend because you're not going through this journey alone you have a companion, and that companion in this game is Delilah. I know that I haven't dove too much into the meat of the story of this game, but I really can't do that without giving away spoilers, so I'll just explore the other aspects at this point. Visually, this game is beautiful. The art design that it uses is pretty unique, and to put it simply, 
it just works. With such little human interaction, you do tend to appreciate nature a bit more, and this game allows you to enjoy it. It's not Skyrim modded hyper realism, but it's still aesthetically pleasing, and very much so. It has been mentioned before, however, in other reviews that this game does have inconsistent frame rate issues, and I have to say, I experienced that too. I played it on my PC, and at first I thought that I had some settings just not quite tweaked right, but it turns out multiple people experience the same issue. Rather than looking at this from a negative perspective, however, just think. I say that this game is absolutely beautiful to look at, and that's with these frame rate issues, so that's really saying something. Don't let it scare you from getting this game. For those of you that are still watching this review and want to know more about the plot without spoilers, let me say this. You take this Firewatch job as an escape from your everyday life and a hard situation. I mean, your wife has dementia no matter which dialogue choices you pick in the beginning. Then you befriend your boss Delilah over a radio and the game encourages you to flirt and gain trust with her, which honestly is really easily found chemistry. Right off the bat, however, you discover teens shooting off fireworks, which is a fire hazard, so you go confront them. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping? Yeah. Is that a guy over there? Oh boy, enjoy dealing with that. But upon return to your lookout, you discover it's been broken into. This adds a bit of mystery, obviously, but also suspense. And those elements are even further amplified when you discover that you're being spied on. Not only is someone watching, but someone is listening to your every word with Delilah. They're tuned into the same channels as your walkie-talkies, so they're hearing everything. Now, that may not seem too worrisome to your survival upon first hearing about it, but remember, in this game, the main channel chunk of the, your playthrough is your conversations with her. Whoever has been listening and watching, they know a lot. They pretty much know everything up to this point. The plotline is linear and you're guided to each objective using a very clever in-game navigation method via a compass and a map, which I, I never really came to a game with that kind of navigation, so that was pretty cool actually. And you even draw on this map as you go through and discover more information, and it's more realistic because if you have a map, you're gonna kind of draw on it and make certain markings and symbols to remind you where to go and what those different places are, right? At least I do. And although this is a short linear game, it's somewhat open world as I mentioned before, and the more that you explore, the more collectibles you'll find. These aren't side missions, but rather collectibles that will add to the game's story. Mostly notes written by past rangers and key characters. There are also some other interactive elements such as a turtle, two raccoon sightings, and something else that I can't mention without spoiling the plot, but I'll just say you may experience a different playthrough than I did based on how much you explore and collect. The game does an incredible job of making these interactions not feel additional or like extras. You feel like everything you do in your first playthrough is supposed to happen, and if you miss something, the game doesn't punish you for it, but it also doesn't catch you up or hold your hand. You just miss out a little bit, but you never notice that you miss out. It's crazy. It's pretty awesome because it serves both types of players fairly and justly in my opinion. Another thing I haven't mentioned yet is the dynamic music system. The developers have talked about this, which I'll touch on in a minute, but the game has an awesome soundtrack which is all dynamic. This means it changes and escalates and de-escalates based on what you're doing or what actions you take in-game. In an environment where you are mainly isolated, that kind of music system really does play a major role to your experience and investment into the plot. I know it may seem like I haven't said much and I've stayed pretty vague, but I've said everything I can without diving too much into the story and spoiling things. The last thing that I have to include, however, absolutely have to include it, is something that is only accessible after you beat the game, and I can't believe nobody has included this in their review or videos about Firewatch yet. This will not spoil anything for you, it just has to be mentioned because it's even more incentive to go buy this game. See, the ending of this game has conjured up a bunch of mixed opinions and mixed reviews from players, but upon completing the game, you unlock a mode called Audio Tour. The Audio Tour is similar to a DVD's commentary feature from the directors of the movie. Much like you'd encounter in an aquarium or a museum, you get to play through the game again, but as you walk through the park and the landscape, you get to pick up these audio tapes along the way. And these audio tapes include recordings from the game developers, like interviews and the voice actors and the staff and all the people involved with the game. Again, this is well after you've completed the game and story, so all the spoilers are avoided because you've already discovered them and all the questions that you're left with that haven't been answered yet are all answered by the best people to answer them, the developers. 
developers. There are so many different ways that this scene can play out now, depending on what you choose to do. Uh, do you throw the fireworks at them? Do you talk to them and then start messing up their stuff and throwing it in? Um, and it ends up being pretty, uh, like, believable. They feel like real characters. Uh, it's just such a crazy spaghetti code in the in the back end that I'm always terrified when I see someone play through it, that there's <laughs> some so interaction You're that so we didn't afraid. think about. Thank you. Now leave us alone. You're a creep. Total creep. Go get a girlfriend. You it's like attending a Q&A session with a panel made up of all the developers and people involved with the game while simultaneously playing through the game a second time. You already have a grip on the story, the dynamics of the game, the characters, and the controls while you play through again, so you're good there, but you're experiencing an enhanced playthrough as you are aided by the voices of the developers. They talk about things that you never think of, things I've covered in this review that I probably wouldn't have even touched or appreciated if I hadn't played through the audio tour mode such as the dynamic music score or soundtrack, or even the design of the lookout that you spend a decent amount of time in on the game. They talk about the day cycle and the night cycle and how that affects the different lighting and textures depending on the certain points of the story that you're in, and it's stuff that I'd never think about. Also, you get to hear from the voices of the characters throughout the game, such as the teens that you confront that are lighting off the fireworks. I mean, this is what I want from every single game that I play, honestly. I was absolutely dumbfounded by all the other review videos I've watched on YouTube so far because they draw up their own theories and conclusions about the plot of this game as well as their own thoughts about the developers that prove to be very inaccurate when you actually take the time to play through the best part of this game in my opinion, the post-completion audio tour. Honestly, when I heard their little theory videos and their conclusions and their thoughts on the developers, I thought, but have you played through the audio tour? Because that will kind of dismantle all of these things that you're saying. All I'll say is if you're one of those people that have completed this game already and you were disappointed by the ending, play through again on the audio tour and pick up the tapes along the way, especially towards the end, so you can hear from the devs themselves on why they did what they did and it will possibly give you a perspective that you haven't had yet on this game. Overall, this type of game was perfect for somebody like me who has a passion for video games and over the years I've converted from a hardcore gamer to a busy newlywed with a full-time job. And now I can only devote a few hours here and there to video games, so two to three hours at a time really does matter to me. This game has a rich story that will pull you in, but it also respects your time. I know most people hate how short it is, but I'm impressed that they were able to pull off such an interesting story while only having a plot that lasts about four hours. That can't be easy to do, and these guys really did pull it off. I've been on the fence with giving this game a 7 out of 10 or an 8 out of 10, and I finished it a few days ago, so logic would say to meet in the middle and give it a 7.5 out of 10. But after playing through the audio tour mode and hearing the devs heart behind this game and really just getting some perspective kind of behind the scenes, it really made me feel like they respected and genuinely appreciated me taking the time to purchase and play through this game and enjoy it. So that mode alone is really what pushes my decision to give this game an 8 out of 10. Face value would suggest a tad bit lower score, but it's a great game that includes very valuable small details which push it to just that extra bit to earn the 8 out of 10 score. Since recording this review, I've actually gotten to play through the game for a second time and there's just so much that I can't include in this video without spoiling it. So if you feel like everything you've seen is just really boring gameplay and this game doesn't have much to offer, that's actually not true and I just couldn't include all the coolest parts without ruining it for you. You really should just buy this game and check it out for yourself. Lastly, this is actually my very first video game review ever and I really just want to start focusing on reviews rather than let's plays and so if you guys have any kind of constructive criticism you can give me in the form of a comment down below, I would really appreciate that. And I just want to say thank you for watching.